Hello and welcome to Crime and Justice. Yes, I've been off for... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry about that. I've been off now. Wasn't on a Friday. So I've been off three nights. Three nights. I did put a video out yesterday. <coughs> because I was going to go live last night, but I was just so tired from the weekend. I thought, I'll just put this video out. It's, you know, it's a lot easier to put a video out. It's a lot quicker. So I put a video out about what I've been going on in the UK over the weekend. So I've done that, and then I sat there and I just fell asleep. Everything I had planned to do yesterday on returning home after dropping my grandchildren back home, Got sort of like delayed till today. So, because I was just so tired. Anyway, I hope you all had a lovely weekend. I did. I spent it with my grandkids. And we didn't do much because it's very hard to get my grandson to go out sometimes. Because he, unless we're going to a certain park or something, then he'll go. But otherwise, if we're not going to a certain park, he, he don't want to go out. And to be honest with you, the weather isn't that great at the moment to be wandering around parks where it's muddy and wet and horrible. So we didn't go out, but we had some fun in the house. Right, so, yeah, we had fun. And then they went home yesterday. And because my granddaughter, when she, she's got something in her head, like when she knows she's going home, she goes, are we going home now? Are we going home now? Are we going home now? And I had that, like, for two hours Sunday morning. So literally from about half eight till half ten, I had, are we going home now? Are we going home now? Are we going home? I went, no, we haven't even had breakfast yet. <laughs> Be quiet. We go home after lunch, which is normally about, they have lunch about 12-ish. So normally about 1, 1.30 we go home. Oh, my Lord. And because she's rushing me, because when she does realise we are actually going to be going home now, she's rushing me, there's two, three items they forgot. Right, three little items. So my son had to come and pick them up tonight after work. Anyway, apart from that, I hope you all had a lovely, lovely weekend. Today, because... Hang on. I'm just getting comfy in my chair. Got to get my feet up, that's it. Let's look, as I've said with this case with Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, there's little things that bother me. Little, little things. I don't know if it would help in finding him. Don't know. But, that Texas Road case, the last sighting, of Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. Right, the last sighting of him at the Texas Roadhouse at 6.30, round about 6.30ish. And he was walking, they've got him on the camera walking out of the steakhouse, Texas Roadhouse, Texas, Texas Roadhouse, sorry, at 6.30ish with his mum. Now, rumour is, this is just a rumour, allegedly, in my opinion, is, was Chris P. Foot working that weekend? Now, 
I have heard on the rumour mill, as you like to call it, whatever you want to call it, that Chris was off work for four days. How true that is, we do not know. So, he's off work. Say, that, say he is off work on the Thursday, the Friday, the Saturday and the Sunday. Right? We go back to... Hold on. That video of the lights, yep. Now, the woman who caught that, whose video it was, of her home security. If you look at the dates, it said her time, the time on her home security camera had stopped at 10 past 3 on the Friday morning. Right? So was that then, was that someone doing a pre-run? Right? Knocking out cameras at certain times just to see if it worked? We don't know. If this is true, if it was a pre-run, right, then this means whoever, whatever happened, sorry, sorry, whatever, whatever happened to Sebastian was planned. It wasn't something that happened on the spur of the moment. It was planned. Right? And if Chris wasn't at work on the Thursday, he was there for the Friday morning, right, to do this so-called pre-run. But I'm not sure about that. It's just something that's not sitting right there. Because what if he was at that Texas Roadhouse on the Sunday? Right? Surely there would have been witnesses of him being there. Surely eventually on that camera they're just seeing him walking out. You know what I mean? So it's not like um, you can hide by going there. You're going to be caught on camera. He's well known in the area. So people know who he is. And it's a Sunday. And a lot of people probably go out and have something to eat on a Sunday rather than stay at home and cook a meal where you've got to do all the cleaning up afterwards. Personally. I like to cook a nice roast dinner. I love a roast dinner. I really do. I love my roast Sunday dinner. But I don't get to cook many because my kids have all flown the nest, nest now. So it's just me. So I don't see the point in cooking a whole chicken or a piece of lamb or a piece of beef or whatever with all the trimmings from one person. So when anyone offers me a roast dinner, I snap that opportunity up like, wow, don't have to ask me twice. Anyway, so if he was at the Texas Road Times, there would be witnesses. Which did the police talk to everyone at the Road Times? Did they call for anyone? Did they put, put a call out? Asking for everyone who was at the Texas Roadhouse, at this certain location, at this Texas Roadhouse, at this time, between this time and this time. Did they put a call out for any information from anyone? We haven't heard nothing about that. Now, I'm sure there's be people who work there would say, yeah, there was. They did ask. They did come and quit, talk to us. But I can't tell you what they wanted, what we told them, which is fair enough. But we've never heard anything about law enforcement putting a call out for anyone who was at the Texas Roadhouse that night. 
which is a bit weird in my eyes as well, in my opinion. Because normally they just said, look, in a statement, they could have said in a statement, we're looking for uh, anyone who was at that Texas Roadhouse on the Sunday night. If you was there, just come, can you come forward and let us know if, if you saw Sebastian and who, he, who was he with? Was he with his mother or what? You know what I mean? But I'm sure if he was with, if, if he was there, if Chris was truly there, that's going to blow his um, credibility right out the window because he's stating that he was at work on the Monday morning. Right? And he was working all weekend, apparently. So, could it be? I don't know. But I think that is something that needs looking into more. Did they actually speak to everyone who was at that Texas Roadhouse that night? Between, I don't know, how long does it take to eat a meal? Normally when I've gone out for a meal with my family, it's about... After ordering, there's a half hour, wait, there's half hour with ordering, and then going to get you, getting your meal delivered, to, brought to you. We're looking at about an hour and a half, two hours. To finish, to order your meal, sit down and eat it. Right? Because you don't want to rush your meal, do you? I like to save that. My meal. I like to enjoy it. Not that I get to do it very often. So was Chris at that Texas Roadhouse? And if so, he wasn't in Mississippi or wherever he was, was it? Plus, why was he there? Because if he was there, why doesn't he just say, well, yeah, I was up on, over the weekend. I saw Katie and Sebastian at the Texas Roadhouse. We had a meal. I went back to the five-wheeler down in Mississippi or wherever it was. They went home. What would be the harm in him saying now? So... My question is, did, and knowing how Sumner County Police took apparently two weeks, two weeks to go and ask about the camera footage in that local store. Not two days, two weeks. Because by the time they went and asked for it, the recording is on a loop. It started recording over. So they could only go back to a certain point. The day they wanted had been taped over. Right? So, it just questions me with some of the county. Did they do a proper job? Did they actually go and question everyone, speak to everyone? Tra tra track the route. Right? Because there's no sighting of Sebastian from 6.30 when he left that Texas Roadhouse. No sighting of him again. There's a, a grainy video of someone, someone I say, because even Seth couldn't say whether it was Sebastian or not. There's a grainy video of someone putting the the uh, the bins out, the garbage bins out, on the curb. Right? Now, my point there as well is, if those lights were on above the garage, 
which Chris stated in the Nancy Grace interview, that the lights are always on above the garage. Now, if those lights were, uh, were on above the garage, which you think there would be, if you're taking the bins out, you want some light on the driveway, don't you? I know I would. Would that not, would that light not give off a, 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 a fairly good impression, a, a silhouette or so of someone, of whoever it could be? Why? Because we know Katie and Sebastian are different builds, totally different builds. Sebastian's tall and uh, what we have a saying in the UK is tall and lanky. That means long legs <laughs> and and like skinny. You know what I mean? So where Katie is possibly I don't know how tall she is, but she's not skinny, if you get what I mean. She's not I'm not saying she's overly heavy, which I don't know how she is. She might be the right weight for all I know. But she's not skinny, tall and lanky and skinny like Sebastian. So would those lights above the garage not give off a better silhouette of that person as he went up the driveway? Yeah? So, my question is again, well, I've got two questions now. Was Chris at Steakhouse, uh, Texas Roadhouse, and were the garage lights on? Now, I'm sure if they seen that video of him putting the bins out, it would show the lights were on or not. Right? But we don't hear Seth say, yes, the lights were on. We've never heard Seth say whether those garage lights are on or not. Because it would give off a glow, whether it caught the lights on camera or camera, it would definitely give off some sort of glow on the camera of their driveway, the top of their driveway at least. But you never hear Seth say on that video of that person going out to put the garbage trucks out, uh, the garbage cans out. The garage lights were on. You never hear him say that. But then again, has anyone really asked Seth that? Or has everyone just took it for granted the lights were on? Of course the lights were on. They were always on, according to Chris. But were they on that night? And then you'd be going further on into the evening. Now, this is just my opinions coming out, right? So don't take this, as I say, as my leads are what I've done, right? So, you go on during the night, yeah? And then you've got these other cameras from another house. And I'm going to go on to Google. Earth. I think it's Google. Well, I'll go into Google Maps. I can. I've got it all better out on there than I have on Google Earth at the moment. Right, and um, you've got the two houses across the road from them. Yep. Uh, there we are. So you've got the two houses across the road. Okay. And this is... Why are we over there? This is their home here. Right? Oh, God. My mouse never works properly on this.
What? Timeworks? I think. <coughs> Hold on, I'm just going to put this up for you to watch. Let's take this down a minute. And I'll present this, the maps to you. I uh, okay. So there's the two lights that are always on. Yeah? The garbage cans were put on the curb here. So it would be this house because I can't see it being that house because their doors are there. So it's gonna be this house here. That apparently must must catch their driveway. Yeah. Personally, so if that is the case, there will be a glow off them lights. Yeah, down here somewhere. Yeah, I'm not saying they will come right out here. No. I'm saying, but let be a glow. So, if they're catching that person walk up the drive, because apparently law enforcement said they could tell it was Sebastian by the way he hopped and skipped up the drive. Seth said he couldn't tell whether it was Sebastian or not. But surely, if these lights were on, it would give off a bit of a glow. So if this house over here, mm -hmm. here, their doorbell or whatever, caught their driveway, would, and obviously caught him go, skipping and hopping up the drive. Yeah, that's why law enforcement are saying it was Sebastian, because they say they recognise the skip and the hop. And I'm sorry, anyone can do a skip and a hop. Yeah, with the torch, with this little torch thing. Why would you need a torch if these lights were on? Because these lights would give a glow out to say here, yeah, light up this area, yeah. Okay, this area might be dark. But it's not that big an area that you've got to worry about needing a torch for, in my opinion. Right? My hallway is this dot, this length. From, say, there to there. That's the length of, like, from my living room to my bedroom, sort of thing. Right? I don't have a torch to walk up my hallway, and it is pitch black in my hallway. If I don't have my lamps on in my bedroom, when I go to bed, when I first go to bed, my hallway, once I turn everything off in the living room, is pitch black. I'm literally walking around with my hands out to find the door of the living room so I don't go face plant it. So I don't face plant the door. And then I'm walking up the hallway, holding, touching the wall so I know when I'm coming, where I am. Oh, I'm by the cubby holes here. Okay. So. I know I haven't got much further to go before I turn. And it's so, that's how dark it is in my hallway in the night time. I don't use a torch to go from, say, there. I will not be using a torch to go from here to there. Not if these lights were on. So, there's that factor. So, factor one. Stake, Texas Roadhouse. Was Chris there? If so, did all the members of staff get questioned by the police? Did the law enforcement put out a call for anyone who was at the Texas Roadhouse on that night? Which I've not heard anything about. Right? Did, and normally, the bugger said, we have put a call out 
Oh, well, I should imagine, like I said, we have put a call out asking for anyone who's at the Texas Roadhouse that night to come forward. They're not giving anything away by saying that. They're looking for witnesses, aren't they? They want proof of life. So they'd be calling for witnesses at the last place he was seen. Who did he speak to while he was there? Was he in a good mood? Was he happy? Was he silent? Was he in a, a stressed out mood? Was he stressed out? Was he his anxieties? His, was it? Did he have... Um, what's that word I'm looking for? A sense... Any sensory overloads. Like, my, my, we was talking the other weekend about my grandson, the other day about my grandson. Right, Halloween. He had two Halloween parties to go to on that week. One was on, is on the Thursday, the Halloween itself. And I think the other one was, I can't remember where she said. And she said to go to both of them. Because he struggles in big groups, he does. So to go to anything big like that, he will struggle. It would be too much. So she's not sending him to either. But they are going trick and treating. They're going out with the mum and dad around the area and whatever, trick and treating. And so I'm just thinking, did did his, his sensory overload kicking at the uh, restaurant? And when that happens, I can go get really grumpy, aggressive, argumentative, or they can go very quiet, not want to acknowledge anyone. What was he like in the, in the restaurant? Yeah, His dad said when he seen him walking out, Normally, when he goes out with Sebastian, he said this, he's skipping and hopping towards his truck. When he saw him come out of that restaurant with his mum, he wasn't. He was just walking normally. How was his mood in that restaurant? That's what I'm trying to get at. What was his mood like at the restaurant? So, did the police, the law enforcement, do their due diligence, diligence and talk to everyone in that restaurant? I doubt it. I doubt it very much. This is some accounts we're talking about. Pally Pally with Chris Proudfoot. Um, say no more. Right, so, they've got a grainy video of someone going up this driveway after taking the bins down. Going back up to the driveway. Yep. And then we've got a rumour. Then we've got that by Katie, her own words, at 10 o'clock, she heard something going on in his bedroom, doing something. And she shouted through, I don't know what you're doing in there, but you best get to sleep. Right? That was the first time she changed the story. But no one was believing that. And then she goes, she heard a thud. Okay, you've got our attention. What do you mean, a thud? Did you go and check on him? He's got an injury. He's got fluid on the brain, has he not, or something like that? I can't be sure what it's called. Could he fall out? And she actually said, Bubba, was that... Did you fall out? Was that you falling out of bed? Well, no, first of all, she said she heard your noise and shouted to her, I don't know what you're doing in there, but you best get to sleep. That was it. Then she put in to the dialogue, to the script, that she heard a thud. And people were going, did you go and check on him? No, 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 he's 15 years old. Why would I do that? Right, and well, we're sitting here with bystanders. And we're watching this and listening to all everything she said. And we're thinking, oh, John, your son's got autism. He's got fluid on the brain or something. You hear a thought in his bedroom and you don't go and check on him. 
the weekend. I heard you thought in my bedroom. I'm not joking, I shut up off my sofa. I was straight in my bedroom. You, did you just fall off my bed then to my grandson? Because sometimes he does. Right? He went, no. I said, well, what was that thought? Maybe in the neighbour. I went, I don't think so because it came from this bedroom. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but he was. I said, just tell me if you've done something, let me know. I'm not going to say to you. I was more worried because of, I heard this thud noise. No, nothing. I went, okay. I couldn't see anything out of place. Nothing broken, so I left it. But my God, I was off my sofa like a flash. Right, but she doesn't go up there. So then she adds to that a bit more and she goes, I heard a thug and I shout through, Bubba, was that you? Did you fall out of bed again? And then she goes on to say, he, he shouted back, said, no, mum. And she said, well, whatever it is you do, go to sleep. So she's made out then that she's actually spoke to him at 10 o'clock. However, 10 o'clock, she was on the phone to Chris. Yeah? You ask Chris to ask anyone, if ever he does an interview again, on a live, someone, please ask Chris about that thud. I will be gobsmacked if he gives you an answer. Because the one and only time he's done an interview, someone asked him about that thud. Right? Can't remember whose interview it was. He said, that is not for me to talk about. And we're all sitting there thinking, what you mean is not for you to talk about. And I think it was on the um, interview with, board, with the two private investigators, the one. Because the one private investigator, I remember saying, well, Katie spoke about it before. And he's gone. Well, that is for Katie to say so, not for me. And I'm sitting there listening to that interview, that YouTube live, and I'm thinking, why can't you answer that, Chris? You was on the phone to Katie. Why aren't you backing Katie up on that? Why? He won't back Katie on that. He's literally throwing her under the bus by saying, well, you'll have to ask Katie about that, not me. Knowing that Katie's not doing interviews. Knowing that Katie won't talk to any of us. Why? We don't know. That's a different. We'll get on to that in a bit. So, she don't go and check on him, even after all that. And people are still questioning him. Then, apparently, it is said... I'm not sure of the timing, but sometime between, oh, did the light come on or not? I'm not sure if Sebastian's light kept flickering on and off between a certain time. And it was caught on home security. Don't know who would get caught there. I don't know if that would have been caught on oh, no, oh. maybe this house here because that's their door and it's directly opposite his bedroom. So if anyone's security camera is going to pick up a flickering of a window, it's going to be that. Unless this house has got a security camera somewhere up here and picks up this angle. Right? But then apparently at 11 30, the whole house goes into darkness. The whole house goes into darkness. Now, remember, she was on the phone with Chris till what, 12 ish? She had to make it very clear that we all understood that at 12 o'clock she went to bed. 12 o'clock she went to bed and obviously went to sleep. So at 12 o'clock 
she went to bed. She kept drumming that into our heads. And when someone does that, I sort of think, hmm, why are you so persistent about that time? Why are you so persistent about the 10 o'clock thing? Yeah? And why are you so persistent about the 12? What happened between 10 and 12? Right? You with me here? So, did something happen between 10 and 12? Or did something happen earlier? And this is just a whole load of BS by Katie and Chris. Because you ask Chris, anyone, ask him in a live, if he ever does another live, anywhere. Because I don't always catch all the lives. And I know they haven't done, been on YouTube since the summer. I know that. They haven't done nothing. That's getting zipped. Why? Why all of a sudden are they start staying zipped up? Why aren't they talking? Have they got a lawyer or, or something who's told them, or law enforcement have told them, zip it? People are picking it apart and they're getting, we're getting too close to the truth. You know what I mean? What happened between 10 and 12? This is just my opinion, because she's so adamant at 10 o'clock, she heard that, she heard the news, then it was a thug, and then she shouted through to him. And then she's so adamant that she went to bed at 12 o'clock. Right? And obviously she went to sleep. Now I remember when I used to have to go up for my kids in the morning. I was in bed way before, well, you know, tell a lie, if it was a Friday, Friday night, then I wasn't in bed by 10, 11 and the latest. The latest would be 11 if my kids had school the next day, because I'd be getting up at, well, in the UK, my kids didn't start school till 9am, so my school, their school was, what, a five minute walk away, <laughs> literally, literally. If it wasn't for this building in front of where I lived, you could have seen their school. Right? So, <coughs> I get up about <coughs> seven-ish. I go and do what I had to do first, like the toilet, bathroom, and then I go in the kitchen and put the kettle on. I start their breakfast, and while that's all going, I go and get my two kids up. They will come through, do what they had to do first, and then they'll come through and get the breakfast. And then they go, get washed, and get dressed. And then sit and watch a bit of TV before going to school. However, something happened. I truly believe he did get home that night. I do. And I think something happened between 10 p.m. and 12. Right? Or did something happen before 10 p.m.? And is that the reason for the three-hour phone call? Yeah? But there's a problem. If something happened where he's no longer alive, right? Just saying. Let's come out a little bit. Oh, yeah, right. Now that's their house there. Yeah. If something happened, that means if these lights that we saw coming from here, from this corner of this house here, over into the ditch. Up and over. Now, if that is true, and I believe those lights, as I said, I think the law enforcement showed Seth 
when the garbage truck came through. They didn't show him these lights round about. We don't even know what time. We're having a guess at round about 3, 3.30 a.m. Right? That would mean if something happened to Sebastian, say between 9, right, from 9 o'clock onwards, someone would have to have carried him from there, over here, into the ditch, out the ditch, and over here. But when I look at those lights, yeah, I see two people. And I'm going to just close that window. And I'm going in that one. I see two people. And I'm going to pull up my Facebook because I'm sure I've got it on my Facebook. It's like two little, two little dots right by each other. And I've heard before, apparently, others have thought the same about those lights. Right. I'm just trying to fit to my other account on Facebook. What's in there? Right. Just went for a lot of Facebook to open up. <sighs> Because I was going on working on this. <sighs> Where's my light video? I'll tell you, that video is going to haunt us. That video of the lights is going to haunt us. Where is it? Where is it? What's this one? Ah. Is that the one? Yeah. Right, now, hold on. I'm just going to share it with you at the moment. I'll play again. In a minute, it's going to pop up. This ain't the one with the full video with the car in it. It's got the egg with the car in it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be stuck. See what I mean? See how it flickers from up over and it looks like the two people. Definitely two people there. It's like two heat sources, two light sources. And it's like two people. You know what I mean? There's definitely two light sources there. Right, so... If you've got two light sources, that means Sebastian was still alive at that point. We know those lights were coming from the house. We know that. 
and that is why law enforcement was saying they have no that video is of no holds no consequence to this case or something like that. That is a load of BS. You said that to get us off this, and a lot of us did drop it. A lot of us did drop that, especially when Seth came out and said, "No, I've seen the video. It is the garbage truck." I thought, "Okay, you're saying it's the garbage truck, but there you can see the car just there." I questioned that when it first came out. When this video first came out, I questioned this he, this light source here. What the hell is that light source? Anyway, so if that was the case, and let's go back to Google Maps again. No, we won't. We're going to watch that again. Okay, we're going to watch it again. Do you have it treated from like, look like one or two people on that one as well? He's subject to, see, it looks like two people. Definitely looks like two people. He's staying in the ditch at the moment, kicking by trees and everything else. Subject one disappears off the screen because it's from behind the head and the side of the head. Still there, still there, subject wrong, still there. Why is it stopped again there? For some reason, it's stopped again there. Definitely two light sources there. I don't care what anyone says, that is two light sources. Definitely two light sources. Hmm. So, if that is correct, if that is two light sources, that means that that was Sebastian and whoever else walking from that house. Yep. So, all right, just stop that. And then, I wish I could get a way of sharing this. Right, stink, you've got the house. So you've got this light source coming from here, across, down the ditch, up and over. Now, you lose the light source because of it going down that deep. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and get over it, but... No. So, it definitely comes from here, and it goes along here, into that ditch, still hidden by these trees here, comes up and over. Yeah? The, other, the light source, subject one, is hovering around here, and then goes out the view of this camera, of this camera that's over here. Because don't forget, this camera over here is pointing this way. Because it's pointing down onto their driveway. So it's pointing down that way. So it's going to catch up anyone within a certain distance of here. Yeah? Because of the angle of the camera. It is not going to catch a flipping garbage truck coming along this road. No way in how, because if that camera is that good, I want one of them cameras. Right? It's not going to pick up that. 
So, and don't forget, out of all the dogs, there was two or three dogs, one dog at least, followed a scent coming from the front door, apparently, around the house, across here, over here, the same way that the lights go. Isn't that a bit coincidental? That the dog follows a trace, a track, a scent of someone. We don't know if it was Sebastian, we don't know if it was Katie. Perhaps they got a scent of Katie. We don't know. But it picked up a scent of someone and followed it that way. The same way that the lights went. The car was parked here. Round here. That's why it was caught on the TV. Round back here. I'd say about here. Why that car would do that? Because apparently it went up this road, turned round, come back down, stopped here. Someone got out. The car then went round the corner, parked there. Why? Why would the car do that? If you're gonna, if you're gonna try for a quick getaway, you're not going to move your car away from that area. You're gonna wait, aren't you? You're gonna wait. Why did that car move from there? Hmm. Now, I understand one of these houses in this road, Kelling Lane, is one of the police officers lives there. All right, some of the county police officer lives there. Safe or whatever they call them. Lives in one of them houses. Could that be why they dropped that person off there and then moved the car away? Perhaps he lived in one of these houses? I don't know. But it doesn't make sense to stop the car there and then pull it round here. Especially when we seen the two light figures disappear behind, round down the side of this house, which is called the common area. Right? So, why did that car move? From here to there. And then reverse back again to pick them up to drive away. That was one of their mistakes, was pulling that car around there. If that car had not pulled up and stopped here, right? The neighbour, the woman, said she couldn't see nothing on her camera. But it was only when a family member looked at it and seen these lights over here and thought, what are those lights? What are these lights? Coming from here to here. What's the car? You know what I mean? So why did... I can't understand why the car would pull up there, drop something off, then pull off around there. Right? The car would stay there, surely. So that when they brought whoever, if it was Sebastian, they'd get him straight in the car, straight off. But they didn't, they pulled up around there. So, I have still got a lot of questions. And as I said, Texas Roadhouse is the last sighting. Who else could have seen him? There has to be more than just that video, there had to be, there has to be more evidence of him at the Texas Roadhouse. And if so, who was he with? Did they meet someone there? Did they meet a family member there and have dinner? We don't know. All we know is what Katie's told us. Right? That they had such a fun day on the Sunday, they went BJ's, then, well, they picked a niece up, went to BJ's, then went bowling, 
a colossal popcorn, or was that a Bee Gees he had colossal popcorn? I can't remember. Then they come home, and then they went. Oh no, they went to Bee Gees where he had a colossal popcorn. And the other thing, she kept making a big point about the colossal popcorn. Remember everyone, if you're in the USA, ask for a colossal popcorn. When you go to, I think it's BJ's. Right? Because that's another point she kept making. Very clear to us. And then they come home, put the groceries away, like the snacks and things like that. And then they went bowling, and then they went to the Texas Roadhouse. Whether they played Agagama Bowls, we don't know. Because at the bowling alley now, you've got all these other things you can do. All these machines, gaming machines you can play, and all that lot. Right? So, we don't know if they had a game of bowl, uh, bowls or not. And then they went and had their evening meal at the dinner. At the Texas Roadhouse, left there about 6.30, come all the way back home, got home about 6.35, because it takes about, they left about 6.30ish, I'd say they got home about 6.40ish, because it takes about 9 to 10 minutes to get her home. Right. So they got home about twenty to seven. Six forty, say. We don't know what time the cap the footage was when it was caught on footage of someone I say someone because we don't know who it was. Put the garbage cans out. And after that, nothing. Nothing apart from Apparently, Sebastian lights flickering on and off between 10 and 11, I believe it was said. Then at 11.30, the whole house went into darkness. Now, she's on the phone to Chris at 11.30 because she's on the phone till just before 12 o'clock when Chris said, wake up, put the dogs in the cage and go to bed. Because she made a point, she went to bed at 12 o'clock. Woke up at 6 a.m., went in to wake him up and he was, no, went in and woke him up and he was gone. That was what she said. I went in and woke him up and he was gone. And there's a lot of us saying, how can you wake someone up if he's not there? Well, he was gone because he wasn't in that bedroom at 6 a.m. He'd gone a lot earlier, about three hours earlier. Right? But who with? Was it Chris? Or was it someone Chris knew who helped him? Did something happen in that house? Before 9.30, 9.45, when they went on that phone call, did something happen between getting home and 9.30? And did, was that phone call to say, oh, I need help, I need help, you know what I mean? This, you know what I mean, all panicky. Because apparently she was reading, having a phone conversation and falling asleep. Hmm. I know we're good at uh, multitasking or swimming. We are. Ask a man to multitask. No, I don't even want to go there. I asked my husband once to, while I was at work one morning, just to run the back over the living room, like the house, the flat, over all the rooms. Yep. Just generally clean up. And I come back and uh, again we had a balcony which was enclosed. So we used it as like a dining area, a chill out area. We used it for many things. And I come home and I said, 
And you know I mean, I went like doing some, it's like, let's sit there and go, how are you going to say thank you? How are you going to say thank you? I've cleaned up. You know what I mean? Whoop, whoop. Okay, you cleaned up. Round of applause. Hang on, I went, how come you didn't do the, uh, the balcony? Because we had carpet down in there. You know what his answer was? You didn't tell me to do the balcony. Ooh. <laughs> right, so asking my husband at the time to do more than one job was hard work. I just had to write it down, every little thing that needed doing in each room. I just make the bed. Bring any empty juice beakers out. Right, from the kids, from you, you, because we both had juice on the side of our beds during the night with watering or whatever. Bring them out, wash them up, right, from all the bedrooms, right, make the beds, just polish hoover, yeah, open the curtains, everything like that. Little things I used to have to say to the point of open the curtains and open the windows. Otherwise, he wouldn't open the curtains and you wouldn't open the window. Anyway, I digress. Let's get back to this. So, that's why I say Sebastian got home that night. Something happened after the garbage bin. But then again, we don't know who that person was who put the garbage bins out. We don't know if it was Sebastian. We don't know. So something could have happened once he got home. We don't know. And that is just a, a, a thing. Oh, God, I've got to put the garbage trucks out. But well, normally Sebastian does it. And they know. I could not live in that house knowing that these two neighbours here. Right? Knowing that this neighbour here their doorbell can hit their front door, living room, and whatever. And this house here, their doorbell hits their driveway. Yeah. I'd be saying that's an invasion of privacy if your doorbells can pick up my lights and people coming and going from my house. Reset your distancing on it to like your curb here not this curb and not my front door and not my garages but no they relied on their neighbours security didn't they because they didn't have any home security or did they alright that's not I want to have a look at hold on hold on Something someone pointed out before. Hang on. I think I'm going to have to come up here. Right. Is that home security there? Oh. No, keep doing that, going on. Sorry. <coughs> Bless you. Sorry. I've got a bit of a cold. <coughs> I've got a bit of a cold coming. Is that security lights? There's the other door. He could have come out of. But I think they would have heard that door. As he says, we would have heard. Because that's their bedroom right there. That's their bedroom right there. So I think they would have heard that door. Or she would have heard that door. But then again, perhaps he was home. Because he just keeps slipping up and saying, we, we would have heard. Now, I'm sorry, but if your bedroom's 
back here somewhere, yeah? You, I don't care how good you're hearing you go. Right? You are not going to hear someone climb out of this window. Onto these. You're not. You're not going to hear it. Right? So, that's a load of BS as well. Anyway, at 11.30, apparently the whole house goes into darkness. Why? Being as she was on the phone till, with Chris till 12. And why did she put the dogs in the cage when normally, when Chris isn't there, the dogs sleep with her? Mm -hmm. Was, that's another reason I say, was Chris at the roadhouse, Texas roadhouse, was he at the house? Because she wouldn't put the dogs in the cage. She have the dogs in with her. He said that in another live. They said it in another live, the dog slept with her when he wasn't there. Because apparently he didn't like the dogs, did he? What happened to those dogs? Can anyone tell me whatever happened to those dogs? Does anyone know whatever happened to those dogs? If anyone knows and you're watching this on Blue Replay and you know, let me know. Because... It's a bit strange those dogs have gone to wherever, gone a bit uh, walky walk, gone for a little walky somewhere. Especially when you've got that question over the bite marks on his arm. Now, a lot of people have said those dogs, you can rough, and play, rough play with them and they don't bite you like that. They don't. And another YouTuber who I like actually done an overlay of Sebastian's teeth. He only got the top teeth. He couldn't do the bottom teeth because it's from the picture he took it off, it doesn't show the bottom teeth. But he got an overlay of the top teeth and put the overlay over that bike bite mark and in my opinion it was very close very close so was that when they did the handover did Sebastian bite him as he's trying to get him in the car or something we don't know this is just all in my opinion do not go oh my god such a such a saying this and that. it's my opinion Allegedly and everything. Oh no, I've just got to get a tissue. I need to get a box. I've just got one of them, you know, them little handy packs. Thank you, thank you. Sorry about that. So. There's still so many unanswered questions. So starting from the Texas Roadhouse. Was... Well, no. Let's start from the Thursday before he went missing. Because that is when apparently word, rumour is Chris was not at work for four days. For the four days before Sebastian went missing. So where was he? You're telling me he had four days off and he never thought of once coming home to see his lovely wife, spend some time with his lovely wife and his stepson, who he said was loved by so much in that house. Loved. Yeah, right, we believe that. Mainly because you made such a point of it that he was such... He was one child that was so loved in that house. No, he wasn't. 
New Game Wrong there, Chris admitted. Come on, Chris, you need to start talking again. We miss your voice. You need to put some facts straight. Some opinions straight, I should say. Not facts, because we don't know. The facts of the case is um, September the 26th, eight months ago and two days ago, eight months and two days, Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers was reported missing by his mother, Katie Proudfoot. A large-scale search was started, lasted for seven or eight days, and then they did, they pulled back. Why they pulled back after seven or eight days, I don't know. All right? But that's when all these local searches were going on then started because the police weren't looking so all these other local searches were going on so question is well not question questions this isn't going to be a long live tonight questions was chris off the four days before sebastian went missing one question did they do a trial run with the cameras to knock them out on the Thursday night going into the Friday morning? Right? Was Chris at the house any time during that weekend? Neighbours aren't talking, and the neighbours aren't talking because of the fear of the threats, harassment. Christ, if they're going after YouTubers, they will go after the neighbours. This is why this injunction has been took out. So hopefully people will open up and start talking to law enforcement or FBI. Because someone knows something. Because a 15-year-old lad just does not walk out of a house. With no trial, no scent, leaving nothing, right? And disappears into thin air. Does not happen. You're going to, unless you're an adult and you, an older child or an older person, right? You're not going to do it. He had no money. He had no phone. He had no shoes. He had no coat. He had nothing. Now, this is a lad that loved his switch. So, if he's going to, if he's going to run away, he will give out, he will give out a plan. He will give out a plan. And that would have been, well, I wait for my mum to go to bed. Right? Once she's in bed, I'll go and get my, my phone, some snacks that his mum had just brought that day. Some snacks, some water, put it in my bag, um, get my money all saved up from my bedroom, put that in my wallet, put my phone, everything. He will have took all of that with him, right? Now, someone on a Facebook post the other day said, perhaps he didn't want to put his shoes on because it might make a noise. But this is, we're talking about a child, an autistic child, who likes, and autistic children, I'm not joking, they like everything in order, in place, in a certain way, right? And so his routine as well was he never left the house without some sort of shoe on. A bit of slipper, slippers, or a pump, a trainer, or shoes. He never left the house without something on his feet because of what happened when he was a young child. Right? So we know that. So that was that was something he did automatically. Put his shoes on. 
Right? Now, putting your shoes on, which were right by that front door, right by this door, and coming out of that door, this house over here, right, if he'd come out that door, it's, oh, God. Right, there's the front door. Follow the line of salt. Where would it have took us? It would have been this house, I believe, would have caught some sort of light or shadow moving around. Yep, when that door opens. Whenever, when any door opens, it doesn't matter how dark it is outside or how dark it is inside, it gives off a light. There's always some sort of light. Always. So, did they didn't pick nothing up? Didn't pick nothing up. So he didn't come out the door. He apparently didn't go out the back way through the sun room because that door creaks. Now, I can believe that. So he didn't go out that door because. We would have heard. Hmm. Would you know? You weren't there, would, was you, Chris? Or was you? Right? Did you come out the door by the garage? No, I don't think so. Because that would have meant you would have had to walk through the living room, well, the dining room, through the kitchen, into the garage, where the door is to the garage. They might, she may have heard him doing that. Right? The dogs might have heard him moving about, which would have alerted Katie if the dogs had been in it with her. Because I've got two cats. Believe me, my two cats scare the shit out of me. I'm lying there in bed and my two cats will jump up. The fur's up on your end. They're staring out at my bedroom door. And I'm lying there and I'm thinking, what are they looking at? And I'm actually... Bending my head around a little bit to see if I can see what they're looking at at the side, in the hallway, in my hallway from my bedroom door. And then all of a sudden, like, dart out. I'm thinking, fuck's sake, who's out there? Who's in, who's in my hallway? And there's nothing out there. My one cat, if he hears that letterbox go or someone knock on my door, he's like a flipping guard dog. He's up there. If he could bark, he would bark. He's up at my front door. Let me know someone's at my door. When my intercom goes, he's there, sitting by my intercom, telling me, answer the intercom, someone's buzzing at you. He's there. Right? So, there's a little patrol cat, that one is. He sees and hears so much. So I'm sure those dogs would have heard him moving through the house. Plus, if this house over here, somewhere over on that other side, picked up a shadow at the window, and then a shadow or someone moving past that window here, past this window, at 11.30, around about 11.30ish, would you not have picked up Sebastian walking past there to get to the garage? No, he's going over to that side. The quickest way out from his room would be out through this window. Through his window, or out this door. Simple as. But there's nothing on a video to show he did either. Huh? So... Even the law enforcement have said there's no proof of Sebastian leaving that house. So where is he? One person who knows for definite, and that is Katie. Right? Now, when I've watched her videos, the very first ones, the ones when she's talking to the Duchess on the very first interview, 
and then the one with WK and whatever. She was really, really upset. And I can believe she was upset. And I got to thinking, I've seen many interviews of parents whose children have died. Yeah. Where the mother can't talk. And when they do try and talk, it's, it's, it's broken. You know what I mean? She gives me that f vibe that something happened to Sebastian that night. Now, did he walk out of that house with her? We don't know. Did he, was he carried out of that house? We don't know. We do know that around about 3, 3, 3 30 there was a light, those lights, yep, and a car. That's what we do know. We know there was a stroke, and they tried to say, oh, that was the um, Uber, Uber, Uber driver taking someone somewhere. No, that was in another road. That was in another road. Why would an Uber car pull up on this road? Well, pull up on... Pull up on, hold on, here. Why would an Uber driver pull up here, then there, then reverse away, and down? When, apparently, the person who ordered the taxi lived somewhere up here. The Uber lived somewhere around here. Right. Now, Uber drivers, I don't know how they work because I've never had an Uber. I just catch the regular, get the regular taxis. Right. But apparently, Uber drivers are very popular in the USA. But it doesn't make sense for that car to pull up there. And the Uber driver, I think it was half five. I believe that he's picking up the person, not three, or three thirty. It was about half five, five thirty. They're supposed to be picking someone up. So it wasn't an Uber driver. So what happened? Every time I look into this case, I get more and more questions. More. And more questions and none of them are making any sense none of what we're looking at is making any sense because when we go back to the beginning and we look at Sebastian and what he liked and didn't like and we know for a fact he would not go out the house without shoes on be it slippers as I said, slippers or pumps or whatever. He wouldn't go out of the house without something on his feet because of an incident that happened when he was a young child. Right? They say you learn by your mistakes. He learned. He learned. Right? Yet Katie says, oh, but he has been known to go out of the house with no shoes on. Hmm. Okay. Perhaps not at his dad's, she said. Perhaps at his dad's, he doesn't go outside without shoes on, but he has been known to go out without shoes on. Is that when you put him outside, Katie, to calm him down? Perhaps he's having a meltdown, and you put him outside to calm him down. And as an extra punishment, put him outside with no shoes on? Is that a possible punishment? And that's how you know he went out, he did go outside with no shoes on, because you put him out there as a punishment, with no shoes on, and to calm down. I don't believe in that. Right, my grandsons, both my grandsons, when they're here, I don't have both of them together. Because they both need their their own space. Yeah. So, when I had my one grandson up from Glasgow, which I did the other week, I was due to have my other grandson that weekend, but I put it off. 
I had them actually on the Tuesday to the Thursday. Right, so it made up for not having them that weekend. Because they both need that room, that space to go to, just to chill out, just to be on the road, right? If I had a three-bedroom property, it'd be great. Be great. Because then the third property I could keep for my other grandson and his mum. Right? So. <sighs> It doesn't, we know he won't go outside. He's autistic. He likes everything. He, they like everything. In, they have a routine. You take that routine away, it messes with them. That's why a lot of children are autistic when it comes to, sorry, I'm all blocked up now. When it comes to holidays, it's like, what's going on? Why aren't why am I not going to school? Why am I not doing this? Why am I not doing that? Because that's their routine. They get up in the morning, they wash, they dress, they have breakfast, they go to school. Right? But when the holidays come, they don't do that. They get up, they wash, they dress, they have breakfast and chill out, do whatever they want to do. Go and play in the garden or go to the park with the parents. But the routine is broken. So for the first couple of weeks, it's like really hard for anyone with autistic children, for that child to think, okay, I'm on holiday, I'm not going to school, and then they've got to get into that routine again, that routine, that holiday routine. So, he has a routine. Now, she never mentions on the Sunday, whether he had a shower or bath, a shower, before he went to bed. She never mentioned that. Now, if she, he gets up at six, right, and his bus comes along about, well, I think the neighbour said about quarter to seven, because they have to be there by half seven, in school by 7.30, which I think is really early, right? But that's not giving him a lot of time to get up, have a shower, have his breakfast, and get ready. Autistic children can take a long time getting ready. They really can. Because you you, you literally have to make sure they're doing everything. Have you done this? Yes. Have you done that? Yes. Have you done this? Right? And it can take them a lot longer than... 45, 15 minutes to get rid of it, 15 minutes to get rid of it. Like my son and daughter, yeah, they could go up at 6 and if their bus was coming at 10 to 7, be up and out ready for the bus. To get the bus, if that was the case. And when you realise, apparently... Right, the bus pulled up outside their house. Don't know where about, but somewhere outside their house because you heard Chris say the bus would pull up outside the house. So he's only got to come out of that door and get on the bus. It's not as if he's got to come out of the door, walk down the road. Right, walk down here and maybe get the bus on the corner here. No, he caught the bus outside the house. Christ, I wish I had that for my kids. <laughs> I mean, we don't have a bus service in the UK for schools. But look, if we can get a bus in the morning, full stop. Anyway. So, for my kids to do that, that would mean, yeah, they could do that. 
because I'd get up in the morning, I'd get the breakfast ready for them. All they had to do was get up, get washed, get dressed, eat the breakfast, make sure they got the bag sorted out and everything, and off they go. But for an autistic lad, no. So we normally, I'd say, probably have a shower on the night time and in the morning just quickly have a facial wash, freshen up and all that lot, get dressed, have breakfast and leave. Hi, but she doesn't mention anything about him having a shower. She says those were the clothes that he was last seeing him. Now Chris will talk about that, or talk about the clothes he was last seeing him, because those are the clothes Katie told him he was wearing that night. But he will not talk about that thought. Why won't he back Katie up on that thud? He backs her up on the what he was wearing. But why won't he back her up on that thud? In my eyes, in my impression, in my opinion, he's throwing him under the bus there because he will not back her up on that thud. He said in a live that is up for, to Katie. If she wants to talk about it, then Katie will talk, talk about it. But it's not up to me and I'm not talking about it. What? But Katie talks about it. Why can't you use on the phone to her? Surely you could say, yes, I heard Katie call through to Sebastian. Because she heard a noise in the bedroom. But it doesn't. Now that's what I find weird. Why won't you back her up on that? Katie, if you ever get to watch any of my lives or any of my videos, you might want to question Chris on that. Why won't he back you, back you up on that thought? Why, in my opinion, has he thrown you under the bus? Because when anyone asks him about that thought, he'll say, I'm not talking about that. That's up to Katie to talk about. He's throwing you under the bus, love. We said he would. And I swear to God, if the police put pressure on him and said, well, you know what, this is definitely looking suspicious here. This is looking like you could go down for a few years. The hair, he'll go, it wasn't me. Katie, he'll throw you under the bus. As Nick and Dog have said, if you need help, Talk. Talk now while you can. There are people who can help. But Katie, you was last there with him. You know what happened to your son. You know. So stop trying to feed us that stupid narrative of a story that he went to bed like a good little boy, no problems. He said, love you, puppy, love you, mommy. But you don't hear Katie say, and I replied, love you too, babes, or love you too, bubba. You know what I mean? Whenever the kids are here, I say, love you. And they, and if someone said to me, uh, how was, how was your grand, how was my granddaughter Saturday night when I had her? I go, I took her to bed, took her in, uh, and, uh, a brother made, a, he didn't have a book to read to her that night. Well, he did, but he didn't want to read her that book. So he made his own story up for her. Right? He took her in, and then when he took her in, I sat and read her the book that he, for her. I've turned round and said, no, 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 sweetheart, love you. And I would then turn round and say, and she replied, love you too, Granger. Because that's what she said. But she says, he goes to, she calls him at nine o'clock and says, time for bed. Right? He comes through and he goes, no, no, puppies, love you. No, no, love you, mum. Oh, all right, Mum, love you. 
You don't hear her say how she replied back to him. Love you too, Bubba. Good night. Don't hear that reply, do you? There's another red flag, in my opinion. And the way she's acting, as I've said, I've seen a lot of women whose children have died and have reacted in the same way she acted in the first week. Right? First couple of weeks. Because don't forget, the first week, we didn't hear nothing of them. They had the police coming and going, back and forth and whatever, but we heard nothing from Katie or Chris. Right? And then, on the Monday, after law enforcement said they was pulling back, that's when the interview came out that they did with WKMV or whatever it was. And the way she acted in that interview was like, my son is dead. And she was so grief-stricken. You know what I mean? Rocking back and forth. She did not want to be there. Everything. It just gave me the vibe that she knew her son was not coming home. She knew then. So did something happen from the time they got home from the steakhouse to, I'd say, 12 o'clock. Well, did something happen in the house from the time they got back at, say, 20 to 7 to 12 o'clock that night? Because that's when she was on the phone to Chris, apparently. She made it very clear, right, very clear. Three times. There's three times she's made it clear. 9 p.m. he went to bed. 10 p.m. she's no. 10 p.m. she heard a noise. 12 p.m. she went to bed. Those three times. 9, 10, and 12. She gets up at 6 a.m. he's gone. That's what she is sticking to. But then, then, I know, because no one was believing that story, and I still don't to this day, she adds a little bit more that 10, 10 o'clock. Uh, she heard a thud. Nothing else, just a thud. And then, because no one still believed it on that, she added a bit more when she said, I shouted through to him and said, Bubba, was that you falling out of bed? Now, if my child had a uh, water, like something with his water on the brain or something, and he had a tendency to fall out of bed, yeah, how would I just be shouting to him? Was, he, was that you, Bubba, just falling out of bed? I, I'd be in there. Right? So, no one believed her again. And that's when she went quiet. Because no one was believing her narrative, the story that she tried to feed us. She went quiet. Because in the interview she was giving near the end, she was slipping up and making mistakes. She'd babble on about how she got in the car and she was driving around and she was looking everywhere and by the time she got here, he was, and cut off, cut off. He was what? He was, you made a mistake, Katie. He was what? You cut off dead. And that's when Chris goes, <coughs> to get you back online, to get your story. And you'll go, uh, uh, and you're doing your three finger tapping on the table. A three-way phone call to get you back online. You had to remember your story. A three-way phone call. That's when you went quiet. That's why you stopped doing interviews with YouTubers. Because you was going off script. He will not back you on that thud. Why? 
I will keep going over that until he or you tells us why won't Chris back you on that thug? And don't tell me, oh, it's because he wasn't there. No, he wasn't there, was he, Katie? So you keep saying. But how come he can back you up on what he was wearing that night when he just walked out the house? But he wasn't there that night. And how he can back you up on saying he went out that front door because we would have heard if he went out this door or if he went out the window. He wasn't there, but he can back you up on all them other things. But he won't back you up on that thud. Why? Why won't he back you, Katie? Talk to us. Anyway, we are not going away. We are not going away. And I'm going to keep pushing this. Because all I want to know was... I'm going to watch some videos tomorrow. I know I might get to do it tomorrow. I might get to watch one or two tomorrow. Right? Uh, of a YouTuber. And I'm going to get some information off his lives. Off his videos. Because I want to know if Chris was at work. Or was he not? Right? And... I want to know <coughs> if law enforcement put a call out for anyone who was at the steakhouse that night to come forward. Did you see Sebastian there? Did you see Katie? What mood was he in? Was he in a good mood? Was he in a happy mood? Was he quiet? Was he loud? What mood was Sebastian in? Why? Right? Was he tired? He'd had a long day. He'd been busy all day. So was he tired? All these questions they could ask people who was in that steakhouse who could possibly have seen him. You're telling me it was just Katie and Sebastian and the, the staff who worked there in that steakhouse that night? No. There was others in that steakhouse. And did the police put a call out for them to come forward? We don't know. I've never heard them say anything in their interviews, in the press release, nothing. Not in one press release did I hear how they put a call out for anyone being at the state Texas Roadhouse on this day on the 25th of February, 2024, between, uh, say, 5 and 6.30. If so, did you see anything? Did you see Sebastian? Did you see Katie? We haven't heard him put a call out for that. Why? What's this with the four days off that apparently he was not working? But I'm going to go over some lives and find this out for sure. Right? And apparently he was at work at 5.50. Now, this is another thing. Right? Apparently, he was at work at 5.15 that morning on the Monday. Yeah. He gets a phone call at 10 past, I'd say 5 past 6. Yeah. Why did he take, he only come off that crane at 10 o'clock, between 10 and 11 a.m. that morning. Because the guy on the ground told the manager, he couldn't work with him because of his attitude. His atti Chris's attitude stank, stunk that day. Right? So the manager come on, come along and pulled him off the crane between 10 and 11 that morning. Now, if that guy had not put a complaint in about him, and if his manager had not pulled him off that crane between 10 and 11 a.m. that morning, would Chris have stayed at work? Because apparently, this is something else, none of his workmates knew about his child, this stepson going missing. No one from his works knew. Not even, I'd say, the manager. That's just my opinion. Right? 
because you don't have to tell your workmates while you're leaving. That's fine. But I'm sure he would have said to his, like, he made out that he couldn't come home straight away because he had to get cover for on the crane. Right? Okay. 67, 78, 89, 9 to 10. Takes four hours to get someone to cover you on the crane. Hmm. Right, okay. Perhaps it does. Right, I don't know. But I don't think he would have come home that day. He was doing everything he could to distance himself from that house and Tennessee Hendersonville. Distancing himself. Right? But he may doubt that he had to wait for cover. The, his line manager pulled him off the crane. So who's covering the crane then? Because he got pulled off. No one knew about Sebastian being missing until the next day. Why didn't he tell his uh, manager, look, at ten past five past six, look, oh, I've got to go home. You need to get someone on here now. I've got to go and come off that crane at ten past six. Climb down. No um, matter how long it takes, I don't know how long it takes to climb down a crane like that. I really don't. Could be 15 minutes, could be 10. Might be five. I don't know. Right? I say, I've got to go home. I've got a personal... Uh, my, grand, my stepson's been reported missing. You know what I mean? I've got to get home. His line manager go, go home. Be with your wife. Don't come back until this is until this is sorted. But apparently he was told not to come back because of his. Uh, I would say it was his. Um, not because his stepson was missing. I think he was told not to come back because of his attitude, and that's why he said his job was up on the up in the air. Right, and then he did get a job covering at another site for a friend. But then all of a sudden he's back at St. Jude's. I don't get this. And then they're going on holidays here, there. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense. The way they have reacted, behaved after that, after Sebastian went missing. The way she behaved was like she was grieving. That's the impression I got from her. She was grieving. She knew her son was not alive. That's the impression she gave me. I don't know how true that is. We don't know. We don't know if he's alive. We don't know if he's dead. I like to keep hope up and say he's alive. I like to keep hope up and say, we're going to find him. And there's something else. Something like that stuck in my throat. That's Chris said. You'll all be apologising when the truth comes out. What's the truth, Chris? Tell us then. What's the truth? I'll find that live when he says that. I'm going to go through these lives. Oh, God, I'm going to have to sit there and listen to his voice. But I know which live, one of the two lives he was on when he said it. But he said, we'll all be apologising, eating crow or something like that, when the truth comes out. Well, what's the truth? Tell us, Chris, what the truth is. Because you obviously know if you think we're all going to be apologising to you, so you must know what the truth is if you believe that we're going to be apologising to you. So what's the truth? Tell us. You won't tell us because you know where it'll end, end you up in. It's going to end you up in a four by six cell. Well, I hope one of you get uh, a deal because I'm telling you now, Katie, if there's a deal going, 
Chris is going to take it because he's already thrown you under the bus a little bit here by not sticking up for that thug. By not letting talking about that thug. By saying what he did, it's like, what? You're throwing her under the bus here. You're not sticking up for her. So he'll throw you under the bus when it comes to the... Well, if you don't talk, we got this on you, we got this, we got that. There's no proof he left that house. What happened? We're going to be charging both you and Katie. Katie with this and you with that. He will squeal like a flipping pig. Because there's no way he's going to do time for you, Katie. No way. Why? Because he wants his daughter. He can't afford to lose his daughter. He don't care about your son. He never did. And as soon as you see it, Katie, the sooner the truth will come out. Anyway, just think about that. I'm going to leave it here. Think about the staircase, the last place Sebastian was seen, the last sighting. Who else could have seen him? And what happened? I saw between 6 40 p.m. and 12. Right? I did say it's between 10 and 12, but I think that 6 40 p.m. to 6 a.m. is the window we're looking at. Something went on in that house between. 6.40 p.m. Sunday night. And I'd say 3.30ish, 4 a.m., maybe the latest, Monday morning. Because then at 6 a.m., she's on the phone. Well, he's on the phone calling police, the law enforcement. His buddies, his friends, Bobby and who else. That's why people don't trust Sonia County, because Chris has buggered that for Sonia. I'll just get my friends in, shall we? I'll have my friends come and join us on the conversation. Remember that time when he said that to Seth? I can't remember. Uh, web sleuths? Live. So, no one trusts Sumia County because of what Chris keeps saying. Or oh, I have to refer back to law enforcement. Or oh, I have to ask law enforcement. Law enforcement have told me not to do this. Law enforcement said I shouldn't be speaking to you lot. Because they're your pals, aren't they? Anyway. I'd just like to say, if you're watching this on replay, please give this video a like, if you like what you've heard and seen. If it's made you question again, any thoughts, leave me your thoughts and your opinions. Right? Because something definitely happened in that house. And if something happened in that house, that meant when we saw those lights, it meant that that subject Two was carrying something, right? Because when subject two made its way back to the house, they moved a lot quicker, a lot quicker going back than what they did coming, which meant that was they carrying something or did they have someone else with them? Anyway, just think about all those look. I know mean, I've been all over the place, Texas Road guys, but that's just me. Anyway, think about it. Let me know what you think. What are your opinions? Oh, don't, oh, don't. Oh, don't. Oh, God, I've got to turn my alarm off. Oh, God, on my phone. I'm oh, not sure. It'll probably go off again in a minute on my phone. Anyway, so let me know what you think. Do you think he got back from the Texas Roadhouse or not? If you believe he got back from the Texas Roadhouse, do you think something happened in that house? 
because the fact that she said you went to bed at 9 o'clock, then at 10 o'clock she heard that noise, and then at 12 o'clock she went to bed. Three Pacific times of the night. 9, 10, 12. Oh no, forgetting. Four Pacific times. 9, he went to bed. 9.30, 9.40, she said. This is what gives me as well. Like, if someone said, oh, what time did my daughter phone me? I'd go, say she phoned me about 6.35. If someone said, what time did your daughter phone you? I'd go, about 6-ish, about 6.30-ish. If they pushed me, if they said, exactly what time? I'd go, I'm not sure exactly what time. I just know it was around about 6.30. But he doesn't, he'll go 6.44 or 6, uh, 9.44 or 9.46. Who says that 9.44 or 9.46? You'd say 9.45, wouldn't you? you? You'd split it and go to the nearest number in the middle. You go to 9.45. So... You got the phone call, 9.40. He goes to bed at 9, got the phone call at 9.40. You got the noise at 10. Then you got her going to bed at 12. And then waking up at 6 a.m. and he was gone. So maybe tomorrow, I'm not sure if I can get it all done by tomorrow. If I can't, I'll do it tomorrow. If not, I'll be talking about Sebastian Buff. <coughs> Probably something else on the case about Sebastian. Uh, something else that has been bothering me since this all happened. Anyway, so, oh, God, get off my screen. <laughs> I hate it when this comes up on my screen, just my head in. So, thank you for watching. As I said, if you're watching on replay, let me know your opinions. What do you think? Do you think he managed to get back to the house, don't you think? Or not? If he didn't get back to the house, where do you think? There was a swap over? Was there an exchange? Or did something happen on the way home? You know what I mean? We don't know. So just think about it. Let me know your opinions. Let me know your views. Um, and I will see you all tomorrow night. So until then, I'm just going to pop this picture for me. Until then, have a good day, a good evening, or afternoon, a good evening, and I will see you all then tomorrow. So stay safe and be good.